folks, Jim Zass, we're here with an exciting video. Never done this before, ever. So I'm here with my friend Sean Wolfsangle. Sean, say hi. How's it going? Good. So Sean is from uh, Houston, Texas. He's a rock star investor. Uh, he and his wife run the business together, like, uh, like my wife and I do. And uh, today's video blog is on how to go from wholesaling houses to rehabbing houses. And I'm going to let Sean tell you about his background in a second. But he does tons and tons of deals in two different markets. So before we get into the, uh, the nitty gritty, how to go from wholesaling to rehabbing, Sean, tell us about yourself, your background. I, mean, I know you're awesome, yeah. but how do these people know Sounds you're awesome? Good. No, uh, I, I hang out with Jim four times a year at uh, Collective Genius. It's, uh, and, uh, you know, with my background, I've been investing for 17 years. Uh, I'm a turnkey provider, so um, I do everything from buying houses, fixing them up, leasing them, and then professionally managing them for the investors. So. Uh, We've been at this a long time. I've rehabbed a lot of houses. I started off as, whole, as a wholesaler and moved into becoming a rehabber, so I can definitely provide some insight on, on how many how transactions you, you do in a year. Uh, we did 110 last year. 110 and, deals. And I manage uh, just just shy of 950 homes uh, between two markets. So he knows what he's talking about. This is good stuff. This is good stuff. So uh, we were talking at lunch a few minutes ago, and you talked about um, you know how how a, a, a wholesaler can learn, can use that experience as a wholesaler to learn their market uh, to help them rehab. And so can you kind of speak to that as to, you know, as they're, if they have the mindset to, to become a rehabber, um, how can they use their experience as a wholesaler to help them learn their marketplace, what areas look for well, I think they need to study their, their buyers, so like where their buyers are buying. Because there's different areas, there's rental areas, mm -hmm. there's rehab areas, um, which make good flips. So they gotta know their market and which areas if they want to make that transition um, and make move into rehabbing, they're going to have to study which parts of their city make sense to uh, to rehab homes. Uh, there's certain areas that you wouldn't want to rehab, right? Uh, or you maybe want to do a light rehab and just rent it. But uh, so they got to know their market and then study that. You know where is a good place for flips for the short uh, days on market, you know, and where they get the best bang for their buck. Very good. Rehab. Very good. And then uh, we were also talking about lunch a minute ago. So there's uh, there's wholesalers' numbers on deals, right? Like, and then there's um, real numbers. <laughs> exactly. So what are some of the numbers that you see people wholesalers really screw up, either as they're trying to get rehabbing or as they're trying to pitch their deals to cash buyers? So what are some of the most important numbers when analyzing a deal um, that you really got to be a whole lot more careful on as the cash buyer, as the risk taker? As opposed to just wholesale. I mean, the, the big two ones would be the rehab budget and then your sales comps. And when you're a wholesaler, you, you can fudge those a little bit. Right. You, it doesn't matter. You're not. Not the that money. we would ever do that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so I mean, you're definitely gonna have to have your estimates from your contractors up front. So you can really have hard numbers of what it's gonna take to rehab. Yeah, very important. Um, and no going in, you're gonna miss some stuff. Your contractor's gonna miss some stuff. And there's gonna be change orders. Or there's gonna be surprises. And it doesn't matter, I've been doing this now for 17 years, and I still have surprises right. today on, on rehab. So you better know their rehab numbers and add a contingency. In how, much, how much do you add in for miscellaneous or contingency? 10% of your budget. Right, yeah. for the unforeseen. For the unforeseen. For the unforeseen. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And that's then good. Uh, know your sales numbers. So have, if you're going to list it with a realtor, you know, really have those numbers, those comps strong, yeah. um, and know what it's truly going to sell for, and really comparing apples to apples. Very good. Better to uh, better to underestimate the sales price than to overestimate. Correct. Right. Twenty thousand dollar bonus is exciting. Twenty thousand dollar oops is uh, not very. It's, it's exciting, painful. just in a bad way. Yes. Right. Yeah. And uh, then the uh, third thing we were talking about. So it was uh, the market. Oh, and this is important. So you don't need to make a transition from wholesaling to rehabbing, you know, overnight. And so, what's the strategy you can use to uh, you know which deals you want to do? I mean, uh, yeah. pick yourself. I mean, I would, I would cherry pick your your wholesale deals. So look at which ones are in areas where there's a lot of rehab going on and it's a, it's a great little neighborhood or market. You know there's uh, younger millennials moving down market. Right. Uh, people are getting the comps and the, the things are appreciating in that area really well. Uh, so you cherry pick your list of wholesale deals and just be selective on the ones you're going to rehab and the ones you're going to continue to wholesale. Yeah, no, that's good. So pick your strongest neighborhoods. Uh, the ones that have the, the most equity and the biggest spreads on them to, to rehab yourself. And then um, I'll tell you one thing we, we've started doing. So this is uh, one section of Manny Young where we've done a lot of deals which are part of Philadelphia. And uh, we've actually started setting our own comps. So we've increased the, we took a risk on one deal. 
it was a good number at real comps, and we took a risk listing like 10 grand higher. We did that. And then 15, we've actually increased the value of the neighborhood. So now our, the highest comps in the neighborhood that were you know, going five grand over are actually our own comps. And uh, that's one thing you can do when you pick a solid neighborhood because right. uh, people just love to buy it. And if you do a good job rehabbing, they'll do it. And then um, we got to wrap this up. But uh, in terms of you know raising private capital for funding right. deals um, or any kind of capital, um, you know, there's JV, there's hard money, there's private money. What's one or two quick tips, and it could be to any or all of those three different types of money, what's one or two quick tips you give folks? Uh, I definitely, uh, I mean, I've used hard money in the beginning. Um, it is a good source. If, if your deals are solid, there's a lot of lenders out there that will, that will give you the money. Um, personally, I, I just love private money. Yeah, I think it's, it's faster, it's quicker, um, less expensive. Uh, and so, you know, and I started with friends and family, you know, and, and that's how I built my, my list of, of private lenders. So, Definitely, that would be my avenue of choice. Uh, especially right now, there's a lot of people looking for the best in real estate. Yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, with, uh, with private lenders, it's all about trust, the relationship, and then the numbers and the deal. Correct. But you'll find a lot of times when you're establishing a relationship with the lender, they ask you, once they say, yeah, I want to do it, do I just, they'll ask you, do I just write a check right now? And they literally want to hand you a check for a couple hundred grand, and the answer is absolutely not. It's got to go to the title company and right. be done the right way. Right. So, uh, so yeah, that's great. So, uh, Sean, I really appreciate you taking the time yeah, here. That's awesome. So, yeah, thank uh, you. We'll see you around. Thanks. All right. All right.